All right, welcome to our first, come on, episode of Real Faith here today. And uh, we are going to ask the question over these next, uh, how many times we have this, is uh, where where we have real conversations about our faith in Jesus. So I want to introduce ourselves. My name is Corey, and I have... And my name is Jamie. My beautiful wife, Jamie, here. Yes. How are you doing? Good. She is... Uh, Amazing. She makes me look better. She's awesome. And we are the lead pastors of One Name Church down here in South Florida. Down here, born and raised in South Florida, we started our church in a pandemic. So we're pandemic church planners. Shout out. So we're excited that we get this opportunity to share with you guys But we're today. also TIU alumni. Yes. We went to TIU, graduated from there. We were trying to remember the year on the way here, but we couldn't remember. Yes, it was somewhere around, I think it was 2011. Like ten, yes, yeah, 10 somewhere or 11. Around so we'll figure that yeah, out. Yeah, so but we've yeah, been married been almost uh, 14 years. We have a daughter, JC. And, uh, She's five going on 15. Five going How on 15. How many girl moms or girl parents in the house? You know the attitude and the spunkiness right. in these little girls. So she keeps us busy. And so we're just excited to be your host uh, for this moment. And we just want to take... This time, uh, real faith, and we really want to dive in and get genuine about faith. You know, sometimes we, you know, you have faith wherever you're at, if you're working in the secular world or if you work in church, if wherever you find yourself out today, if you're a mom, if you're a parent, whatever, wherever you find yourself, we want to take practice, we want to take spiritual things and make them practical, make them real and help you have real faith in a world that's right. Needing yeah. real. Yeah. Yeah. We're in a I, world that's needing real. Right. And I think so many times I think the word real to me means not imitation or artificial. It means genuine. And I think we live in such a world that they want to define reality for us and we don't turn to yeah. God's word, but real always means action. So right. when saying real faith, that means how do we have real action towards our faith in Jesus Christ? And I think that, uh, it's hard to find in today's world, and we define our real based on our history or what our parents told us or what somebody else in the workplace tells us or what we scroll on Instagram. We find our real many times in the wrong places. So how right. do we define that real faith in our worlds and in our lives? Right. So we're not trying to be relevant here or cool here. We're just going to be real. So we're going to have some real conversations on how to have that faith. And um, we don't want religion. We want real. Come on. So this is going to be that opportunity. So we're going to dive real faith. So today we're just going to jump right into the topic that we have uh, going to discuss and God's put on our heart today. And we're going to answer this question. How to determine what is good and what is God? Mm. How to determine what is good and what is God? Like, have you ever thought you were right, but you're actually wrong? You this do all the time. This, this happens all the time with you because, <laughs> no, I, I, the nickname, Jamie, I used to call her Kia, like know it all. She always thinks she's, so we took a trip like. I mean, come on, all of us ladies in the house, we right. kind of know sometimes we got to keep the boys in line. Right. But there's only, there's rare times that I'm right. Yeah. And you probably remember all of them. Right. You probably have a I note do. in there's your phone. There's a list. They're probably, yeah, there's they're probably written down. On. And I have it. But, <laughs> you know, sometimes, you know, you don't know, but I know, we went I on a trip, it. right? Five year anniversary, we went to California. Mm hmm. And we were this. driving, we, we made a, we made a decision to drive from LA mm -hmm. to San Francisco, right? Whose idea was that? I don't know. It was dope. I, yeah. But we went to Disney World. It was fun. It was awesome. We were celebrating. So and we're like driving. side note, you don't drive. I'm the driver in our family. Right, I'm the navigator. Yeah, so because anyways. I get us lost. So we have to like put the best right. person in the best seat. So I, I navigated. Okay. So I took control of the navigation and I said, I'm going to go, we're going to go this way. And we were on the Pacific Coast Highway. We were like, let's look at the it's beautiful. mountains. Let's, yes. It's going to be awesome. We were stopping at the beach It towns. was great. And I got confident that I knew, like, okay, this is where we were going. It seemed right. So I turned off the GPS. Mm -hmm. We started driving. And then we started to go, hey, the ocean is, like, not to our left. It's not there anymore. Like, what is going on? So we realized after me turning off the GPS, seeming like I thought I was right, that I was actually wrong. We were driving towards Las Vegas. <laughs> I 
Like we were heading towards Las Vegas and we were going the wrong way. Yes. It made our five hour trip seven hours. It was crazy, right? And that was not fun. And it got me thinking, like, as we talk about how to determine what is good and what is God, how many times do we think we're right and we think we know what is God, but it actually is designed as good. Mm -hmm. It's like a counterfeit good that Mm -hmm. the devil wants to offer us, but it's not actually God. Yeah. Right? Yeah, and I think that happens so many times because I think we we all have a plan for our life or a situation or how we want it to turn up. Um, but that's not always what God's best is. It's good. Our, our solving of the situation is good, but God might yeah. have something greater. So many times I think we're deceived and settle for that good because we don't allow God to take place. Right. Like a lot of us, I think, and I talk to a lot of people, people we pastor, we talk to, they're settling for good instead of God. And I think they're missing out on the will of God. Mm. Like God has a plan for your life. He has a will for your life. He has things he wants you to accomplish, but sometimes we get distracted in what is good and not what is God. And we have to understand that God has a standard for good. That is not our standard and that's the world standard. And we have to be very careful in order to determine that, or we will think we're right when we're not. Look at what it says in Proverbs. I love, I love, the word of God, it's our foundation. We're going to be talking a lot about that and bring it practical. But Proverbs fourteen twelve says, there is a way that seems right to man, mm-hmm. but it ends in the way of death. Yeah. And that got me thinking like, man, there's a way that we think is right. Like we thought we were going in the right direction. We thought it seemed right, but yeah. it actually was not leading us towards our destination. Yeah. And how many of us right, are chasing the good that we seem is right, but it's not actually God? Yeah, that's really right. Good. So I think the question that many are probably asking and leaves us with is like, how do you discern that? So like, okay, that's good. I, I, I grasp the concept of what we're talking about, good or God. But how do you walk through that process of discerning that? So in our relationship, I'm the real practical one. Right. So I'm constantly like, Corey, bring it back. How do we, what are our action steps? How do we do this? So I think over these next couple of minutes, we really want to break that down for us because I think it is a discipline to learn how to discern God versus good. Right. Um, Cause sometimes we, we, we just are left thinking that, Oh, this is what is happening is good. So it must be from God. But when we really didn't stop and seek God, how do you really know that? Like, right. So and like Jam- James one says, don't be misled. Whatever's good is coming down from the father. Mm. So it, it like sometimes we're misled. Yeah. And especially in this world now that we're misled. And I love this quote. A.W. Towser says, everything in the universe is good to a degree. It conforms to the nature of God and evil as it fails to do so. Mm. So yeah. the only way before we get into like kind of the practical, we can kind of determine what is God is it has to be submitted under God's ways, mm-hmm. submitted under the truth and the word of God. Um, because if not then that's where we're deceived. It happened in the Garden of Eden, right? Genesis 3, 6, where she looked at the tree and she said it was good. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I look at the tree. It was good. Yeah. Pleasing. But it wasn't God. God said, don't eat of that tree. Yeah. Tree of life is the way. Mm -hmm. It's the way of life. So let's just, I want to download a process because I think we've come up with the process as a family as a couple, um, us kind of leading and people ask us these questions all the time. How do I have discernment? How do I know if this is God or good? How do I know if it's a good opportunity or a God opportunity? Mm -hmm. How do I know if God is leading me? You know, some people are moving their families across the the nation because finances are, are struggle, but is it a good because it's cheaper or if it's God? Yeah. And I want us to help us discern that. I think this is the problem. This is the cycle of discernment that we use that can help you out. It's three steps. All right. Yep. First step is instruction. Mm. So instruction. You cannot be brought into maturity without both warnings and instruction. That's good. Like you can't grow without warning is an yeah. instruction. Yeah. Instruction happens through three things. The word of God, mm-hmm. the Holy Spirit, mm-hmm. and spiritual leadership. That's good. Oh, that's hard word. Spiritual leadership. Yeah. And I think a lot of times uh, we get stuck here. Yeah, because we're really good at this part. It's like, easy, right? You got content. Yeah, you, you don't con- have to do anything. We're, we, our society has trained us to be content consumers. Like 
online. We go to church. Like we live in a day and age that you can pull up any pastor, any leader, any TED talk, anything from around the world and get instruction. It's what it's almost like we're subconsciously trained just to be consumers of instruction. Right. But then what do we do with that? Like, right. And I think that's why we have to be very careful on the instruction we're getting. But we need instruction. Yeah. Instruction is a vital part of discernment, because if you remove yourself from instruction and warnings, you are not going to hear the voice of God or yeah. know what is God. Yeah. So that's why we say the word of God, the Holy Spirit and spiritual leadership. Yeah. That's why being a part of a local church is important. You need spiritual leadership. Yeah. You need to have the word of God. You can't just read it once you know, every day and expect to hear God in these things. You have to have the Holy Spirit guiding you and leading you. Mm -hmm. So you need instruction. You need, that's the first part. You need to make sure you're positioning yourself under instruction to discern what is good and what is God. Then the next thing is once you receive that, it will lead to revelation. Yeah. And like we said, most people get stuck, stuck in instruction. Um, but like, revelation is something you have to do, right? Yeah, revelation you have to moves seek this out. into the responsibility part. Instruction is easy. I don't have to do anything. Maybe I sit and take notes. Maybe I don't even do that. Maybe I don't even, you know, retain any right. of that information. But revelation moves into the part of where you get, um, where you, where it has to become your own. You have to take ownership and responsibility and say, do I know this and believe this because I was told this? Or I know this and believe this because the Holy Spirit spoke this in my life. I read about it in God's word and it became a part of my life. Like right. I was giving the example earlier and it sounds funny, but like when I was a kid growing up, my grandma would tell me if you didn't take the, all the soap off the dishes, you would get diarrhea. Yes, I said it. But Where like, did you get that? I mean, I don't know. That's what my grandma told me. Like, I don't know if that's real or fake, but it just was something generated. And you believe that, right? I mean, as a kid, yeah. I was like, shoot, I'm getting all this soap off these dishes. I don't I don't want this. Um, so that was like, that was that was instruction I was given. But later in life, now as you a realize, parent, like yeah. I have to be like, okay, is this true? Or I'm just spitting some threat at my kid to get her to get all the soap off the dishes. Right. So I think, I mean, it's deeper than that when it comes to spiritual revelation. But I think that's what it comes down to. Are we just repeating and doing and saying things because we were instructed them or because they've been revealed to us in our right. life. And we, we kind of say this revealed knowledge versus communicated knowledge. Yeah, that's good. Revealed knowledge is when God shows you something directly. Yeah. Communicated knowledge is when you hear it from someone else. Yeah. Yeah. It happened in the garden of Eden. Yeah. It was funny. And you read the scripture, you go Eve, when the, when the serpent deceived Eve, yeah. she came up to and said, Hey, God said this, and she had communicated knowledge from Adam. She, she wasn't on the scene no, yeah. when God yeah. gave the command to yeah. Adam. Yeah. So when she said in the scripture, God said not to eat of it. And then she added the communicated knowledge, which I don't know. Maybe Adam said, don't touch it. It does not say in the word of God, not touch it. He just said, don't eat of it. Yeah. And with that being said, she didn't have revelation when yeah. God was in the garden with her. She could have went up and asked God, Hey, did you really say this? Yeah. 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 And get revelation. I mean, from that, him, but that's so good right there. Think of that. How many times she do we go. not take our questions back to the right source? Right. We take them back to every other source because at the end of the day, we're looking for the answer we want, not the answer from the source. Right. And that's why it's important that we don't just go under instruction. Like yeah. Timothy says, that makes our itching ears what we want to hear. Yeah. We have to go and get instruction that we know is grounded in the truth. Yeah. Holy spirit led. And spiritual leadership that loves us, cares for us, and mentors yeah. us. Then we have revelation. And then the third part of the discernment is manifestation. So once you have the instruction, once you're receiving revelation from God through prayer and fasting, that we do a lot of prayer and fasting at our church, and we that's how we get revelation from taking the instruction and actually getting revelation and prayer and fasting. We go to manifestation. His word comes alive in your life. Yeah. In your spirit. Yeah. Most of us are walking around making decisions that we have no revelation from God. Anyone, you ever hear someone say, God told me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. When did he tell you? <laughs> like, And it's like, well, did you pray about it? Did you fast about it? Did you did you do the things in the word of God? Did you ask the Holy Spirit? Did you get wisdom? Like, no, God told me because I felt some type of way in a worship service. Yeah. Or God told me to, to do this. Like, oh, God told you or is that from there? When, when God really tells you, you see the manifestation of the truth and the Holy Spirit in your life. And you know the truth about God when you know God's character. Yeah. So this is how you develop the fruits of the but Spirit. But then before you move on to that, I think God's character becomes your character as well. Right. And it's no longer like, I no longer have to discipline my tongue because God's character has became my character. And it's easier for me when I get angry, maybe not to lash out because I, I've 
believe that it's become a part of who I am. It's now right. my second nature because I'm taking on the fruits of the spirit and I'm being able to live in his character. I think that's when you know. Right. So I think after you go through this process of discernment, you can really get to a point in your life where you're determining what's good, what's God. Yeah. And how I can make these decisions because, you know, wherever we're at working, whatever we're doing, it's hard sometimes. We have yeah. no ability in our human nature to define what is good mm-hmm. or morality. Mm-hmm. It has to come from the word of God. Yeah, yeah. It has to come from these things. And once you do this, we want to give you some practical questions that we ask ourselves as family. And we ask anyone because we have a lot of people come out. Hey, God's telling me this. Help me make this decision. How do I do this? Um, And this is what some of the questions we ask. The first question you need to ask yourself when you're having discernment, is this good or God? Is this desirable or beneficial? Mm, That's hard. Right? Yeah. Because Corinthians says not everything's good for you. Yeah. I mean, I have a desire absolutely positively every time I drive by Cali Coffee to go and get a coffee. It's not beneficial. That is a co- wait, that's a coffee place down here in South Florida. Yes. So it's a and really it's great delicious, coffee. So people but it's are listening. It's like a know. milkshake. It's like a thousand calories. I like it's not, I mean, it's desirable. Like it's 0.2 miles from my house. I have this desire every time I drive by. It's not beneficial for my wallet for my pants, for my waistline, for nothing. It's just desirable. But maybe it's not beneficial. Exactly. And I Mm -hmm. think that's the question you need to ask when you're discerning if this is good or God. Like, am I desiring this out of my own flesh? Yeah. Am I desiring this out of my own ambition? Yeah. Or is God, or is this really beneficial aligned with the word of God, the yeah. Holy Spirit, like we said, and spiritual leadership? Is this aligned with that? Because mm-hmm. if it's not aligned with that, then we are chasing desire. Yeah. And if your number one desire in life is not to be in the presence of God. Yeah. Then you're probably chasing good and not God. Oh, yeah, because I think that that's such a good point you make, because I think many times we get it twisted and backwards that are our desire in life should be to fulfill my calling. You know what right. we get focused on my desire is to fulfill what God called me to be. And that's part of it as well. But if your first desire isn't to follow and be in his will, then what are you really, are you chasing him? Or are you chasing the, the platform of the calling that he's given you? Right. You we know? are, we are to seek God first. Yeah. And the yeah. kingdom of God first. Yeah. And all the things all the will be things added will to be it. Added. Yep. So when you do that and you seek God first, yeah. then you receive the things from him. Yeah. So don't chase desire. Chase yeah. what's beneficial. How do we know it's beneficial? It's in the word of God. Yeah. Like yeah. that's what's beneficial. And yeah. in a world that is going farther away from God, we need to get closer to God by doing these things. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Next question. Is this aligned with God's word or my feelings? Ooh, that's hard. Our feelings will always lead us astray. Your feelings will lead you astray. Yeah. But God yep. will show you the way. I mean, because That's I my think one here. of the biggest things, like when I read God's word, even like, like, let's take joy. Uh, the Bible talks about choosing joy. I think so many times when feelings are placed in the Bible, it's placed next to a word like choose. Right. So what the Bible's telling us is that we have to choose and align and discipline our feelings. And I think that's intentional in God's word because our feelings can lead us down all the wrong paths for all the wrong reasons because we can build assumptions and accusations and feelings about things that were never the truth. Right. And um, it's just like, that's why you have to, uh, David says, get down in your spirit. Oh yeah. Like you got to get down in your spirit. Cause sometimes your feelings will lead you astray. Like, Hey, you know, you know, we're in the middle of the NBA playoffs right now at this moment, but, um, and the heat lose and I get all, all, all depressed and I start my feelings make me want to make decisions I shouldn't be making. Yeah. So I said, you got to remove yourself from yeah. that. Yeah. Move yourselves from the frustration. But and down go, in our spirit. What is God words? I shouldn't probably go yell at my boss today. Yeah. Because God's word says, no, that's not beneficial. But being down in our spirit requires, or requires us to handle things in the spirit. So it means having conversations that are hard sometimes. It means right. asking for forgiveness for where we fell short. It, like, in our feelings is an uncomfortable place. That's good. Sometimes last that's- two questions and then we'll be done here. Is this God's will or my way? Mm. You have to ask that question. Am yeah. I aligned with the will of God in, in the word of God or am I seeking my way over his way? Yeah. Because 
so usually we pray to God, God, give me this. And we treat him as Santa Claus. But God's yeah. will is yeah. maybe us. We need to align to that. Like, no, I want your will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I am here to do your will. Yeah. I'm not here to just chase Correct. something and then ask you, God, to come inside of what I'm chasing. I mean, I think right? for us, many we've done ministry in South Florida for many years. And we were doing a lot of good, but we found ourselves at a place that it wasn't God's will for our life. He wanted us to plant a church. That's what he was asking us right. to do. But it was hard to discern that. And this is where we learned a lot of that in that season because we were doing a lot of good. We were reaching people for for his name right. and doing a lot of good work, but it wasn't God's will for our life. Right. You have to fall in love with God, not with the things of God. Yeah. Good. You know what I mean? And that's where you determine God. And then you use those things to help you. Yeah. And then last question is this. Am I pursuing holiness or living for the world's definition of good? Mm. That's really good. Yeah. Because I will do the things of God even when it doesn't feel good or seem logical. Yeah. This quote, yeah. I love this quote. The entire sanctification process is not only essential as a condition of entering heaven, but it's also mm. necessary for the highest results of Christian life on earth. Wow. And when we do this and we choose holiness, this other quote by, that was Doug Clark, this quote by Oswald Chambers says, the destined end of a man is not happiness nor health. Yeah. It's holiness. That's good. Like, we're not here to live happy. We're not here to experience the things of the world. God says, if you're a friend with the world, you can't be a friend with me. It's like committing adultery. Yeah. He says that. He says, like, I am a jealous God. I love you so much. You are holy because I am holy. Yeah. So when you pursue holiness, you hear God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you live in the yeah. ways of God, and pursue, and it's not perfect. You don't have to be perfect, but you need to have a pursue. Yeah. And like, I, I want to pursue to God. To make it really practical, a pursue is like not the absence of messing up or making mistakes or sinful nature. It's not the absence of that. The pursuit is a true repentive heart to always turn back into the direction of what God's asked us to do. I think... But our world twists that. Our world says you can pick and choose what you want to do out of God's word, but still receive all that you want to receive. And I think many times when I talk to people who are trying to discern God's word yeah, and God's will good. for their life, there's many times in there that if we break it down and really get to the root of it, there's something that has to do with aligning holiness that God's asking them to give up or adjust or modify that they're just unwilling to do. And because sin will always cloud your judgment. Yes, yes. It, yes. If that gets in the way, it would always make you chase good yes. and the counterfeit good that the devil wants to yeah. offer. So That's good. with all of this being said, we want to leave you with not everything is good for you, Yeah. but God is. Yeah. So chase God, submit to God today, submit to his ways, do the things we've said, and let's make God decisions, not good ones. Yeah, let's Let, be God people, not good people. Come on. Let's chase God opportunities, not good opportunities. And let's have real faith, not good faith. See, come on. We can do this. When we can do this, we can position ourselves to experience God in a whole new way that we've never experienced before. Yeah. So let's chase God yeah. and not good, and we will receive the things of God. Yeah. We just want to thank you guys for tuning in today and hanging out with us we're thankful that you're listening share this with someone let them know to come listen to what we're doing we are pastors at one name church yes. in south florida so if you want to hang out with us we meet at regal broward here in the area plantation you and can follow us on instagram follow us on instagram at one, one name, name church yep and our our website's one name.church but we love you guys we're thankful for tiu and this is awesome have a great day <laughs>